For today's EMN5, I'd like to talk about tumor lysis syndrome. So let's forget that I just told you that and start off with the case. You have a patient with a history of CLL, recent chemo about five days ago that presents with his family for worsening mental status. He's a little bit confused. He hasn't had any fevers recently and no recent trauma that you're aware of. Here's the EKG from triage. You can see that there are some peaked T waves here. And as you start to get the labs back, you notice some abnormalities. You have hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia, and a new AKI with creatinine of 2.4. So what else would you like to order at this point? So let's start off with some labs. Is there anything else you'd like to draw? Good, so how about a phosphate, uric acid, and LDH, and we'll send those out to lab. And what are we considering right now with this patient who has just had chemo, has hyperkalemia, and new acute kidney injury? Good, the title of his talk, tumor lysis syndrome. So what is tumor lysis syndrome? Essentially, it's a massive sudden lysis of the tumor cells inside the body and it releases all of these intracellular breakdown products. Many times it's a complication of chemo, radiation, steroids, really anything that contributes to increased cell death of the tumor cells and can cause some pretty significant metabolic derangements and eventually lead to renal failure among some other complications. Risk factors for tumor lysis syndrome include cancers that have a high proliferation rate. So for example, leukemia, ALL, and lymphoma, any patients that just have a large tumor burden to begin with, some cancers that have a really rapid response to chemo treatments, for example, CLL and small cell lung cancer, and also patients that just have a baseline renal insufficiency. So let's talk about these cellular breakdown products and the electrolyte derangements that you can see. So let's start off with potassium. Would you expect it to be high or low? Good, so we talked about in this patient already who had the EKG changes, you're gonna see a high potassium. And a high potassium can cause arrhythmias, even cardiac arrest, weak musculoskeletal changes. Now what about phosphate? Good, so it's gonna be high phosphate. And what about calcium? Good, low calcium. So high phosphate, low calcium. And the reason why calcium is low is, is because the really high amount of phosphate binds up calcium to form calcium phosphate crystals. So these precipitate out and therefore decrease the calcium. And as a result, the calcium being so low can cause tetany or even seizures. You would also expect the LDH that we checked to be low. And what about uric acid? Good, so uric acid is gonna be high. And again, this precipitates out to form uric acid crystals. So we have two things precipitating out, the calcium phosphate crystals and uric acid crystals. And those two things is what leads to the renal failure that we talked about. So what happens is these crystals actually precipitate out in the renal tubules, causing renal failure. So a lot of the treatment of tumor lysis syndrome is actually in the prophylaxis. One big thing is IV fluids. So as a form of renal protection, you make sure that the patient is well hydrated both before chemo and after. And if a patient comes into the ER, of course, you can give them fluids as well. The goal is to preserve renal function and eliminate the breakdown products. Allopurinol can also be used. As a reminder, allopurinol inhibits xanthine oxidase. And xanthine oxidase is the enzyme that converts xanthine to uric acid. And remember, uric acid is what precipitates. Xanthine, on the other hand, is easily excreted renally. And lastly, we have uricase, also known as raspuricase. Uricase is an enzyme that humans lack that converts uric acid to allantoin. So if you give the patients this, again, you're decreasing the amount of uric acid that can precipitate causing renal failure and converting that to allantoin, which is also easily excreted renally. Generally, if the uric acid is seen to be greater than 8, either before treatment with chemotherapy or after, you can consider giving allopurinol or raspuricase. And you might see your patients that are high risk for tumor lysis syndrome actually come in already taking raspuricase. So treatment is based on a couple different issues. We just talked about the renal failure, IV fluids, the enzymes, and of course dialysis if things are getting much worse. You need to treat the electrolyte derangements. So for example, the hyperkalemia you need to treat, and then also this hyperphosphatemia you can treat with phosphate binders. And make sure you're checking labs frequently. So three to remember for tumor lysis syndrome, the patients that are high risk that you need to be thinking about this for when they come into the ER are patients with leukemia, lymphoma, and who have had recent chemo or some kind of treatment for the cancer. The presentation is gonna be high potassium, high phosphate, and low calcium, remember, which binds up with phosphate, and high uric acid. And these things form crystal precipitates that cause renal failure. Treatment is IV fluids, using enzymes like uricase and also checking frequent electrolytes.
Here are the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.